Welcome to the Maureen Show. So wonderful to have you tuned in with us today. This is Dr. Maureen. I'm Dr. Tom Anderson. And this is my wonderful son, Scott. Pastor Scott is going to be our special guest today. We are so excited about talking about his new book. Amen. This book has been out for a little while, but it, this is amazing information. And of course, I wrote Becoming a Millionaire God's Way, but then, you know, my son <laughs> became a little bit comp competitive yes. and decided to write one about... I think like a billionaire. Yes. And then my brother's doing one on trillionaire. And so that's kind of a fun... <laughs> It's kind of a fun idea. Just all, you know what? Every generation should always go go beyond the next generation. Yes. So whatever yeah. you guys were able to take, then me and Jason start off right there. Yeah. And uh, just a lot of the information, of course, was just off of what you had. And, and come to find out when you wrote it, then I got into thinking and reading. I read a ton of books. And I came to the conclusion that wealthy people think differently. Yes. Totally and I could say from my perspective, I, I've known you most of my life. <laughs> and so <laughs> I like that. That's good. But I, I watched, you know, because we grew up pretty poor and we I was did. able to watch your transformation of what God was able to do in your life. But a big part of it. Yeah. God, God's favor is important, but also changing our thinking. Yes. Right. And it's so there, there was a change in how you thought yes. about investment. There's a change. And so you come to find out wealthy people have a different mindset about so many things. And the Bible mm -hmm. says, as a man thinks. So is he. Yeah. So that tells me that if I can think like a good husband, I can become a good husband. Mm -hmm. If I can think like a millionaire, I can become a millionaire. That's right. And that's what it is. You find out that I was actually reading this. This was in the uh, uh, Wall Street this last week that wealthy people read an average of two books a week. And the average person reads uh, half a book in a lifetime. That's about the truth. People are yeah. not reading books like they used to. This book is so loaded with such awesome information for everyday life. Just every day. Every area. When, when I wrote, my, my book is more about concepts concerning yeah. wealth and biblical concepts. This book is so practical with biblical knowledge, but also practical information for our people potatoes. out there. Yeah, and what about you, Bob? And you have come <laughs> into Bob? great wealth. I have. From God has your been book, me. so yeah, and so it was just a, a, a like I said, we were talking about the just the, the the reading. Warren Buffett reads three hours every day. He reads. He reads three hours, every, even though he's got he's one of the wealthiest men in the world. He's still reading three hours, and you find it in the Bible. The Bible says in Proverbs, above all, seek what wisdom, wisdom and understanding. Yes, above all, above and so all. wisdom. But I like how it says also understanding in there. Yeah. So wisdom is to know what to do. Understanding is being able to take the action with what you do. And yeah. so one of the things I talk about in the book is everybody knows how to be wealthy. If you play Monopoly, everybody knows. Now, people don't play Monopoly and just sit and go, you know, I'm going to collect $200. I'm just going to go buy a I'm going to see all. if I can become a millionaire getting $200. Yeah. Now, yeah. what do you do? You're like, no, 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 i got to buy land. i gotta, I got to buy hotels. And if you fail, well, the next time I'm going to try it again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweak it a little bit. And... That's how you're supposed So everybody knows how to do wealth, but the understanding is what takes the action. There you go. Mm -hmm. So when I begin to understand it, now how do you get understanding? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing. That's right. So wealthy people speak a different language. And I know that uh, when I first started uh, reading books, and so I began to immediately, I read books, I listened to CDs, I, I read about well, well over a couple hundred books. I listened to hundreds of hours of CDs on wealth. And... I knew many times I heard ideas about wealth, but I never took action. Right. But then one day, um, I remember driving around and looking at land, and land was, uh, I kept going, God, if I would have bought that land a few years ago, oh, I'd, I have made, I'd have made a right. ton of money, but I bought that. And then finally one day, I was looking at a piece, and the guy told me how much it was, and I'm like, oh, if I'd have bought that a year ago, and then something hit me. I went, but if I buy it today, what will that be worth in a year from now? So we bought it. And with Jason bought it and we made 70 grand within, I think it was within a month. And I went, that was pretty awesome. This is awesome. So as I begin to hear something over and over and over again, it allows me then to step out and take some action. So it's one of the things that's in the book. Um, we also talk and you like this wealthy people, they invest, the average person buys Spanish. junk. They yeah. spend. Yeah. People invest. If they learn to 
invest in every area of their life instead of spend. Don't spend time with your children. Oh, invest good. in your children. Right. Right. Don't spend time with your spouse. Invest in your spouse. Right. Don't, don't just spend money on TV. Save up money to invest that can make money. Right. That's the premise. So we spend tomorrow's money on our MasterCard so that we get in the future, we don't have any seed to do it. And I don't know where you're at today, but what if you started today of just getting yourself out of debt, and then as I began to get out of debt, I built a wealth account, and then I began to invest that money, and then all of a sudden I'm able to spend, because here's the problem with, with America today, is we are spending more than we're bringing in. The secret to wealth is to have more come in than going out. That's how you make money. You have to have more money coming in than you have going out. How do I do that? I mm -hmm. have to begin to get rid of my credit card debt and those things, but then I need to start some sort of business. And you did this, um, and you didn't even know it growing up, but you had a business, right? I did. The, ch the I church said, hey, this is all, we you had to take like a $40,000 pay cut to work for the church. And you said, all right. And then you bought and sold cars. That was bought your business. Cars. That was my yeah. business. That was low. extra income. Yeah. So you had your income, high. and then you had extra income. There you go. And, and uh, I think that's a secret to life is find a way Secret to, let me say this, it's a secret to begin to get on the path of making more, is find a way to make a little extra money. How much does that need to be? Well, even if you made an extra 20, 50 bucks a week, still in a year, if you made $50 a week, it's still $2,500 in a year. That's $2,500 more you would make than if you watch Matlock tonight. And people use, do not use their time wisely because you know the Bible says redeem the time. And so right. again, Time should be invested. Right. Uh, that word I got from the Lord that said the last minute that passed, was it wasted or was it productive? And that's been a driving force in my right. life that I don't waste time, but I invest time, everything that I can. And so it can be the smallest, and the Bible says despise not small beginnings. There's nothing wrong with starting out like the lady I talked about last week. Yeah. We just talked about she bought a $10 book and she doubled her money on eBay. And then she doubled, doubled her, her money, money and doubled her money and kept doing this. And now she's a very wealthy, wealthy uh, woman and her husband quit his job. And that's all they do is franchise books, all used books on all over the world. And it just started with $10. And $10. That's, and don't despise small beginnings. That's an important thing. Because I, I do this when I, uh, when, and you and I sometimes do finance conferences uh, together. Right. Is, how many people out there would like to make $1,000 an hour? Everybody goes, yes. How many people would like to make five bucks an hour? And nobody puts their hand up. And I say, well, those are the two, the, exactly the same thing. Exactly. Because unless you're willing to sacrifice the time that it takes in the front end of a business to make five bucks an hour. On my knife company, I literally didn't take a paycheck for two years. Didn't take a paycheck for two years. That we worked it and we worked it and we worked it. And every and dime now, gets, gets reinvested constantly. Yeah. And reinvested. now we have a multi-million dollar company, which every week is a very good paycheck. But you had to be willing to do the first couple of years with nothing. Pay There's, the price. That's the seed. So a farmer doesn't go out and plant seed and go, well, where's, and, you know, pick them all up uh, and say, okay, I need my harvest. Well, no, it takes work. It takes time. It takes learning. Okay, I did some crops and these died. These didn't turn out right. And you learn how to work it again. And you learn how to work it again. And here's the thing that wealthy people think differently than the average person is we hear nine out of 10 businesses fail. And the average person goes, well, then why start a business? That's bad odds. But a wealthy person minded person says, you mean I only have to start 10 businesses to become a millionaire? That's it. Because it doesn't matter that the first nine failed. No. What matters is on the 10th, he became a millionaire. So I always go like the wall of Jericho. How many times are you going to march around the wall? As many times as it takes. As many times. If I go down the first, I'll do another. I'll do another. I'll do another. The more times you throw a dart at the dartboard, the more likely you're going to hit the center. But if you just throw one dart, because I have a lot of people that, well, I tried business. It didn't work. Right, right again. and so many. Yeah, that's exactly right. Try it again. I've had so many different uh, inventions and so many different things, but you don't stop. You just keep on, and you're going to hit the one that actually works. And we're going to be back in just a few moments, so stay tuned. We're going to continue talking about... Yes, becoming, it says here, think like a billionaire. Think like a billionaire. You got to get this book. If you don't have it, you need it. It's so practical and applicable to every day. We'll be right back with more information. God bless you. We don't know what your situation is. Maybe you've been a Christian for a long time. Maybe you're a new Christian. Perhaps you don't even know the Lord. Maureen Anderson has a powerful word for you of truth and hope and promise for your life. 
partner with us. The Lord says when you work with Him and His ministry and His mission, He'll bless you in every area of your life, in your health, in joy, peace, relationships, everything. Partner with us. Call the number on your screen and give us your testimony. We would love to hear from you. Welcome back. So wonderful that you stayed tuned. We want to continue talking with Pastor Scott now. Pastor Scott now is the pastor of Living Word Bible Church here in Mesa, Arizona, and a church of about 15,000. And uh, he also has a business that he runs on the side, which is called Raven, Raven Crest. Crest. Raven Crest. And they can, Tactical. They can get a Raven Crest Tactical, and they can uh, go to a uh, app. Just go to knifeknife.com and you can see the business. And you can do an app and order and There's all that sort of stuff. everything. Yeah, it's just a really cool knife business it that is. God blessed me with. And uh, one of the things that we talk about in the book that's so important, and Mama, I've heard you do some great teachings on favor, and that's kind of where I got the idea from, was the teaching on God's favor out of Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. He begins, and God gives Abraham, he says, hey, I'm going to bless you with an increasing amount of favor in your life. And here's the thing that most people chase money. And God says, don't chase money. Let money chase you. And that's what favor is. Favor is, is when things are coming, people, resources, and ideas are coming to you. The Bible says that wealth will chase you down. That's true. Uh, about, now, I wrote, I, writ, I wrote this book, I don't know, about seven, eight years ago, and then I rewrote and I added about 12 chapters to it after I had lunch with this guy. He was worth $500 million. He paid $5,000 to have lunch with me. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> he wanted to I'd, have I'd eaten with him just for, for, I'd paid the lunch too, but he, so he wanted to have lunch. And so as I was talking to him, there was a noticeable difference in just the way he responded, the way he talked. Uh, but one of the things he told me, he said, you know, I watched my parents, because he, he was a self-made, uh, almost billionaire. He said, I watched my parents and my grandparents spend their whole life chasing money. He said, I made a decision at a young age that I would be someone that money would chase. And I went, mm, that's favor. an interesting concept. Yeah. That's favor. Yes. You attract it. And so that's how the knife company, I just attracted, the, uh, in a sense, you. my partners. Uh, <laughs> we originally were going to start a, a business that was going to do uh, uh, websites, which I know nothing about. And I went to, on vacation. I came back home, and my partner's like, hey, what about selling knives? And I was like, okay. And we started it, and the rest was... Uh, history and the same thing for my toy company, which was before that. Uh, the toys just dropped in my lap. Yep. Uh, remember some great people, idea. Uh, it was a yeah. great idea. Uh, and so Holly, Holly's mom, my wife's mom's husband, had gone to China, brought these funny toy, toys we never saw them before. So we contacted China, did a b bunch of fun stuff, and we had the toy company. And so that was my uh, well, was number fourteenth business. We were, ju <laughs> we were just in a mall last week. And they were you selling the splats yeah. again. They're, they're a little different, yeah. but they're throwing... Well, as soon as the knife company... So the toy business went, woo! I mean, we sold millions of toys. Millions. And then it went, woo! And so then I, the knife company, boom. So then I sold the, the, the toy company, which was great. Um, it did very good things. But most importantly, they came out of the toy company is wisdom. You so that we don't do the stuff. same mistakes twice. There you go. And that's the thing with trying. You get on a bicycle for the first time, you, you're learning, you're making some mistakes, you, you fall, you get back on it. Yep. And that's with business. So I've never had a failed business, though I've had businesses go under. Right. Because I've always learned from every business. Every business has given me information so that when we came to the knife company, it was able to, in a sense, between me and my partners, to explode like none of my other businesses were able to explode that fast, to get this big this fast. I mean, it's just amazing what it is doing. And But this information in this book, which is, people need to read through because it applies to how to save money at everything that you do, right. as well as what to invest in and how to make money with investments. You need to get, get a hold of this book. How, yeah. can, they, how can they get this? Uh, they can come over to your house and pick up a copy. I'll give them their address real quick. <laughs> you know, Amazon, Amazon's that. the best place uh, uh, to get this. You know, we think that uh, on the back here, these are kind of the things that we talk about. Um, the average person thinks that if I had a better job, I would become wealthy. I mean, well, not, I don't know many people that are millionaires that, you know, that just have a job. You, anytime you no. think of a wealthy person, you go, oh, business owner, right? So right. You, do you That's see, true. We, once again, we know how to become wealthy but we don't have the understanding. 
right. when I understand it, I instantly go, I got to take action. I need to start some sort of business. Because in my people life. will do what they understand, not what they know. What they know. Everybody know. You know, everybody knows how how to be a good husband. They know it. They watch a movie, uh, The Breakup, and they watch the guy in The Breakup, and they go, "Oh, what a That's horrible terrible. husband!" I was out with we, we were out with a couple watching that. <laughs> I love those movies. And when we, when we were, were driving home, he, now he was exactly that guy. He was a horrible husband. He's like, "Oh, that guy was a jerk." And I'm thinking to myself, "You're him. You <laughs> you know what it looks like to be a bad husband, but you don't have the understanding. And understanding is what causes you, in a sense." to take action in your life. And so the same thing. You know that a job is not going to do anything but get you to the place where you can retire with just enough to get by. And, and you get a Winnebago, and you barely you struggle in, in, in Wait your till retirement. Wait until you can't see or hear, and then drive a Winnebago. Yeah, that's right. And then you look at the owner of the company, you're like, well, how come he gets to have the Well, he owns the company. And you can become an owner also. How? Yeah. Start a company. Start something. Start Still chimichangas. Something. I don't care. Whatever, whatever you. It's crepes. I, I sell books. Sell. We talked about eBay, crepes once. Do, we talked about starting up. In today's house. system, God has provided a system in America here where anyone, like it's anyone. crazy. This my knife company, twenty years ago would not be successful. Right. Because a majority, seventy-five percent of what I make is on the internet. It's crazy how much it blows my mind every day when I find out how much we made on the internet. It blows my mind that there's that many people that are buying knives on the internet. It is. It, um, there's so you many get on ways Amazon, on the you internet get on to eBay, make wealth. You can get. Oh my gosh! Uh, I met a guy who's making a ton of money just buying comics. He goes and he buys 50 comics every every week uh, of, of this uh, of Walking Dead. That's his thing. But whatever. So he buys 50 of the Walking Dead's, and within six months they're worth 10 times as much. That's a nice investment. That's a great investment. Every month. There's so many things like that that you can make money. It's, it's, it's getting to where money works for you rather nice. than you working for money. Your product starts. I mean, it's just an amazing thing if people would become financially literate. Yeah. And that's really what you're talking about is financial yeah. literacy. Yeah. And when I read the book, I mean, I think it was one of the best books I've ever read on money. And <laughs> that's how Mama says. That's Mama well, no, it's really the truth because it it's, it's very... It's very practical. It's it's easy to understand, but it also gives you great ideas tools. to step the tools you need to to step into wealth. And and I found myself then thinking differently, right? Like, you know, and and uh, in my prayer life and that, you know, praying about okay, God, we need to do investments and and you know the word talks about you know investing and. And, and multiplying your finances. In fact, so the really only place that we find, when we talked yeah. about it last week, but the only place that we find, well done, my good and faithful servant, is the those investor. that have invested and multiplied wow. money. Right. You can't find it yeah. anywhere else in the Bible. We, we know we're supposed to win people to Jesus. We know we're yes. building the kingdom of God. But God was so clear in how Jesus explained to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because he investor. had taken and invested and had multiplied the money. And, of course, yeah. multiplied money is what builds the well, kingdom to start with. Yeah, right. well, well, when you can make great money, you can give so much into the kingdom. And that's the whole thing that you guys always taught me, and that's yeah. really the premise. The book starts off that way, that we're blessed, as Corinthians says, to be a blessing on all occasions. That's the purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Not, it doesn't mean, you know, you, 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 get to enjoy you go some. through Ecclesiastics and it says that we should be able to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Yes. That's what you're I said. able to enjoy certain, you enjoy life to a yeah. level. But then you're able to imagine if your church that you're going to right now was filled with millionaires and billionaires, what could your church do? How I much, know. Building could they How much of the world could they change? How much could they help the poor? How much you know, can so they many feed the hungry? So many churches are, stay just making it. And then they're trying to help the poor. But can you imagine if they develop the people to become wealthy mm. and then the people and then the church could finally help the poor? Instead we, of a poor helping the poor, it could be the rich helping the, the poor. poor helping, and you could teach the poor how to become wealthy. 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 Yeah. And it, it's, it's a great system because the church's reach is dependent upon finances. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, well, well, what about God? Yeah, I get it. But here's the thing: is we're still we're still limited. Living Word Bible Church, our income is what determines our reach. That's and it. the more income we have, the farther our reach. Which means the wealthier that the people that go to Living Word Bible Church becomes, the more income we have, and the more we can do all over the world. 
Your church is the same thing. It's limited. The pastor gets up. Hey, we want to build a building. Wouldn't it be great if you just had five people get up and go, Pastor, don't worry about it. We got it. Yeah. We'll take care of it. Pastor, you just worry about a good message. We're going to build a youth center unlike anything else. We're going to build something that even the NFL is like, wow, wow where people exactly. fly in. How do we do that? We need the people within yeah. the church, within the body, to be increasing. How do we increase? i got to get wisdom and understanding. And it's interesting that the Scripture says that God is interested and always has increase on His mind. He's always increasing. Yeah. For you. This is what's on the mind of God is that He wants you to continue to increase. Not your waistline, but He really wants you to increase <laughs> your finance. You said the waistline. Did I say that? I shouldn't I have said have that. Been. Sorry about that. Uh -huh. But really, it's about in, He wants to increase us in wisdom. He wants yes. to increase us in understanding. He wants to increase because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just, but, but the just, just aren't learning how to get it. Right. And, and they're not getting the understanding, not getting the financial wisdom that is available. It's in books everywhere that it's being taught. And of course, there still is some people out there that are not into the prosperity message. I understand that. But prosperity means health, wealth, joy, peace, and highly favored. Now, I'm not sure which one of those they don't want. I, Maybe yeah, money. You don't want money. Okay, but at least you want. You still want prosperity because you want health. Yeah. I still think you want joy, yeah. and peace, and favor. But you anyway. know, the word says that if somebody comes to you in need, and you have nothing to give them, say, "I'll pray for you." Well, where's the love of God yeah, in that? There's no love. And so, so when you reach out for wealth to become wealthy, is because it should be the love of God That's that right. is driving that, because you care about those that don't have any food or or, uh, you know, homeless and, and the orphans and all those things that you care, the widows, you know, the right. Bible talks about. So when about, you have the finance, you, you can, can help you, them. You yeah. can, can take care of them. And, that's Every, a, and everybody has a different passion. You talk, to, yeah. you talk to 20 different people and some are like, man, I, I just want to do something in Gulu, Africa. Some are like, oh, I want to do something oh, for Boston. Oh, must be your brother. Oh, I want to, yeah, my brother's over there now. So you, have, you get all these people with different passions and then you go, okay, so what's holding you back from being a blessing in that? It's finances. Fine. Okay, so if you had the finances, what would you do? Oh, I, I would build a church in Afri Africa myself. I would do that. Okay, so what's holding us back again? Once again, it is the prosperity. It's the blessing. Well, I don't know. I, I'm busy doing this, but I'm building a church <laughs> and a business. Yes. Does it make, you're, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So whatever you're doing, if I can do it, anybody. You did it. Is you it? operated and built a big church. On the side, you were a business. Yes. Yeah. Because the church is not your source, God's my source. And when my business becomes the source of my income, then I've limited God. Because God cannot make your boss give you a raise. That's right. He can't make him. He's nope. got a free will. Free yeah. will. But when I start a business, all of a sudden I've opened up a door where God's now favor can work and bless me in Unlimited. That. Unlimited what it can that's do. That's their night business is unlimited. It's unlimited what it's it can do. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and, and so that, that's what God wants to do in your life. And he's given you million dollar ideas. Most people I talk to, I go, now think about something that you had an idea for. And then five years later, you saw it on the shelves of Walmart. Every, almost everybody goes, I know, I had it. What's the difference between you and the person that made millions of dollars? I invented the wheelless trailer. <laughs> ah, and the snowboard. He did. I actually, you, you, yes, I you did showed snowboard me this. as well. And, and years ago, and couldn't sell it because the state shut it down and said they didn't know how to license it. And, but now they're on cars all over, plugged into the back end, right. and they got bikes yeah. on them, they got storage on them, and they got... I think... I, I saw a sea do on the back of one. You were 25 when you invented 25, that. 25, yeah. And so God took gave it you to the idea. Right. Yeah, but the state wouldn't license it, so we just let it go. We didn't... I wish I had kept the patent. That's what I should yeah. have done, because right. I did patent it. But there's so many ideas... What they don't understand is in, in uh, Malachi, it says that God would rebuke the enemy on our behalf and all of that. But it says he'll open the windows of heaven. If you translate that from the ancient Hebrew, it actually means he will bring to you ideas of prosperity or ideas of wealth or opportunities. Wow. That's what it means. So I need that, to add that to my book. That's really good. It isn't just, he's, <laughs> gonna, he's really not going to pour it out in the backyard. No. He's going to give you the opportunity to multiply because when you've tithed and brought your offering into the house of God and then you give him something that you've invested in the earth, 
He said he would multiply it. And he says, 30, 60, and 100 times. He'll bless whatever you put your hands to. But if you there don't you put go. your hands to anything but the remote control, you have the best television programming probably around. And the best TV, probably. The best TV. Yeah. But if you begin to put your hands to a business, and you know, business can be so many things. It could be write a book. Well, I don't know if I can write a book. I've got an idea for a book. Well, not, see, you're talking to somebody whose English teacher said that I shouldn't even go to college because I have no English <laughs> skills. No. And I have now written seven more books than her. Yes. And, and, does it, and I, so I went to college and I failed remedial writing class twice in college. Non-credit course, but they said I have to take it because your spelling and stuff is horrible. I got it from you. So as a result, I have now written somewhere over 14 books. Yeah. <laughs> right? But anyway, you still get out there and do it. You still do it. If God gives you an idea, and here's the thing, when God gives you an idea and it's beyond your limitations, who gets the credit for it? Because yeah. anytime I say I wrote a book, it's God that wrote a book through me. That's it. If mm -hmm. I was super smart on book writing, Salvation. then it would be different. It's time to close. Time to close. We're running out of time. I just want to talk to you for a moment about receiving Christ. Because if you haven't received Christ, that's the very beginning of the root of what I believe the prosperity of God has for you. So I just encourage you today, pray this prayer with me just for Amen. a moment and watch your life change. This is not about religion. This is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that brings you eternal life, but life and life more abundant. And more abundant is right here on earth that's what God has for you. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God. Dear Father God. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Of all of my sin. All of my sin. I ask you, dear Jesus. I ask you, dear Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. My Lord. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for making a decision. Let us know. Give us a call. There's a number on the bottom. Check out our product on on uh, Dr. Maureen's website. It's absolutely awesome. It's right there on the bottom of the screen as well. And we will see you next time. Thanks for being with us. God bless you. Hi, I'd like to share with you today this book called God's Grace Fuels My Passion. This is a real good book by Dr. Moraine, and she's really poured her heart into it to reveal the heart of God. And it talks about grace, uh, God's ability to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. When there's no condemnation, you can do anything. And that's where the power of God's grace fuels your passion and his love just overwhelms you and you'll be able to do great things. Have a great day. We are a 501c3. All of your donations are tax deductible. The WordForWinners.com ministry believes that your tithe belongs to your local church. Your financial donations to this ministry are received as offerings to support spreading the gospel of grace throughout the world. Go directly to the web to place your donation, thewordforwinners.com. Become a Grace Revelation Builder today.